Podcast fam, Ryan Frankel is the founder and CEO of Frankel Media Group, a full service marketing and communications agency headquartered right here in Gainesville, Florida. While attending Santa Fe College, Ryan saw an opportunity to publish a magazine for a community in town. That quickly grew to a statewide publishing business and ultimately a full service advertising agency. 16 years later, Frankel Media Group has grown to become a marketing powerhouse with clients all across the United States of America. Enjoy today's episode. You are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. I am your host, Colin Austin, and today I've invited my friend Sherman Merricks to co host. Today's episode, Sherman, what's up, man? Not much, I'm excited to be here and co-host with you. <laughs> Doesn't sound very excited. No, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, excited. Excited, I'm excited to I'm be excited. here. I'm excited. Dude, so when was the last time you were here? We, You were here uh, for a mastermind. For a mastermind, right? Okay, so that was episode 120. 120, then I was here for We're talking episode. money, you're yes. a money guy. I, I am a money guy. Sherman is a money guy. I am. And then before that, episode 104 was like your featured yes, episode. Correct. So you guys like, I just I just click with this guy a lot and I was like, you know what? Since Mike has moved to Jacksonville, miss you Mike, uh, I was like, dude, Sherman, come, come co-host with me, man. Upgrade, Mike, <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> so whether whether it's a guest appearance or whatever, we'll, fi- we'll figure out how it goes. Yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out. Awesome, man, well I'm glad you're here. And uh, so do you want the full you know, experience, co-host experience. I like, do. All right, I do. man. All right, well, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and thank some sponsors and I'll let you go first. All right, so <laughs> we want to give a special thanks to GMV Commercial Advisors at Collier's Gainesville. Now, if your business has ever purchased land, sold property, or negotiated a lease, you know how important it is to have someone in your corner who knows the market and delivers results. That's why you see so many Collier's Gainesville signs all around town. The GMV commercial advisory team at Collier's Gainesville has the most experienced commercial real estate team in the market, along with access to a global network of industry experts. With one call, you'll know why so many businesses trust them. Learn more by visiting them on the web at Collier's.com backslash Gainesville. Yeah, collars.com slash Gainesville, y'all. And if you find that new commercial location and you move your entire business operation from the town of Tioga to Celebration Point like today's (laughs) amazing guest did, uh, hit up our friends, the UF Mover Guys. They help the Frankel Media Group move. They can help you too. These guys move homes and businesses. They do it all full service packing, moving bulky items, disassembling furniture, you need storage, they can help you out there as well. Sherm, you know what my favorite thing about the UF Mover guys is? I don't, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. <laughs> that, that, that was great, yeah, that, that's right, I am going to tell you. You don't have to pay anything up front. You pay once the move is completed and you are completely satisfied. These guys have over 600 Google reviews with a 4.9 star rating for a reason. Call them now to have them help you move your home or business by reaching them at 352-415-0886. Again, that number is 352-415-0886 or visit their website at ufmoverguys.com. Ryan, you were saying they they helped you move, huh? House, office, storage, everything you name it. (laughs) They can do it all. So, and real quick, you guys, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to put out this final reminder that the community the community foundation of North Central Florida is putting a twist on our community's sixth giving day by introducing the Amazing Give Workday Edition. This 12 hour online event is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thursday, April 22nd. Uh, That's this Thursday, April 22nd. I'm actually going to be hosting this event, so you will be able to catch me live at the top of every hour, and I will be out at Celebration Point between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. I'm gonna be in Ryan's neck of the woods out there. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, to help really bring this awesome event to a close, the Amazing Give is an opportunity for us to rally together and give back to the organizations in our community. Whatever your passion, be health, human services, arts, education, animals, or more, this is the time for your gift to have the greatest impact. Please 
Go to theamazinggive.org to find your favorite nonprofits and donate. That's gonna be a great event. Again, that's Thursday, April 22nd which this episode releases on April 19th. So if you're listening to this that week, it's this week, y'all. Get out there. Come see me. Come see me. I'll be out there. So you ready to get into today's show? I am excited to chat with Ryan. Let's let's go. I didn't know this was Sherman's first deal. Yeah, this is his first deal, man. All right. Hey. Man, and he's doing a great job so far. Yes, he is. I love it. So, you guys, today on the show, we have Ryan Frankel, founder and CEO of Frankel Media Group. I've been trying to put this show together for a little while, <laughs> yep. and finally, it is here. Ryan, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you sticking with me. <laughs> I'm excited. So, let's let's dive in. I like to start with the stories, man. Just yeah. let's, let's take it back to that origin story and just build it up from there. So how do I, how do I get into what I do today? Absolutely. Um, well, so I, what, th- what brought you to Gainesville? School. Okay. Um, so I played soccer all the way up to high school, and college. When I realized I wasn't going to be <laughs> Pele, I thought uh, you know maybe I'll be a sports agent. Didn't have the grades to get into UF, so I came up here to go to Santa Fe. I was a broke college kid living in a house with four guys and my girlfriend at the at the time, blocked from the swamp. Um, working two jobs at the state attorney's office during the day and for Dean Cacciatore at uh, his catering company at night, catering up in the skybox on football games. Um, so that's what brought me to Gainesville. What years were those? Uh, I, was t- I graduated high school in 2001. Oh, okay. we're the same age. I graduated 2001 too. I know I like this guy. Uh, <laughs> same age. So I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there. Too. I graduated high school 2000. So. Okay. We're all right in the same same realm yeah. there. Yeah, grew up in South Florida and came up here for school. Um, but uh, as a broke college kid, um, we were parking cars and I was making pizzas at Dean's shop out in Hale Plantation. And one day he came to me and said, hey, can you help me come up with some ideas to help market the pizza restaurant? And uh, you know, he knew I kind of liked watching my family and business, and they'd had businesses. And I grew up my whole life with dad saying, "Hey, man, you know, what do you think of this brochure? What do you think of this idea? Um, you like this logo?" And so Dean came to me and said, "Hey, can you help me market the restaurant?" And I didn't realize at the time that this would ultimately become my career. Um, but the idea was, "Hey, Dean, why don't we put the menu on top of the pizza box, just like?" Domino's does, and that way everyone in Hale who takes a pizza home will get a copy of the menu and maybe they'll reorder. Um, and Dean basically said, hey look, if you wanna design it and figure out how to print it and do all that, you know, go for it. And I said, well, can I go next door to the, the Village Jeweler or some of the other businesses that were in Hale and see if they'd put a coupon on the bottom of the pizza menu? Um, and uh, you know we could use that money to pay for the printing and that's how we could pull this thing off. And Dean basically said, look, dude, you wanna deal with all that pay for the printing, you can design it, and whatever's left over, just keep it. You know, that, that's what you can have for doing it. That's all you have to say. Exactly, right? exactly. So I went to Village Jeweler, and they say, yeah, you know, it's 50 bucks a month. I'll put a coupon, it goes to every house in Hale, you know, wealthy, wealthy area. And they say, yeah, 50 bucks a month or whatever, well, I'm in. I thought, well, you know, I'll go, can I say that? Can yeah, say fine. Shit? You already said it, keep going. You already said it, keep saying it. Keep saying it. <laughs> so, uh, Went to the next business, I don't even remember who it was. Hey, 50 bucks, we'll put your thing on there. Yeah, in. Okay, well maybe you know we'll we'll fold the menu over, have exactly. the menu on one side. You open it up, it's got you know six or eight or ten coupons, fifty bucks each. I'll make four hundred dollars a month. That was more than I was getting from my parents at the time. Um, filled up the inside, and more people wanted to do it, and we put a couple pages in. And what wound up happening is that that's how the Village Journal at Hale Plantation, the first magazine that I produced, started. So it wound up being twenty four pages menu on one side, upside down on top of the pizza box, and then we distributed the rest of them all around town. This was 2004, 2005, when print was still a thing. (laughs) Um, And that started the magazine. I probably made seven or eight grand, which at the time may must have may as well have like been a million dollars. Like for the year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For for whatever that yeah, yeah that, that time issue period. was or yeah. something. Okay. Um, meanwhile, I uh, lost total interest in school. <laughs> um, wasn't going to class. Hosp- every day talking to businesses about their fifty dollar coupon. How much more class did you like you I was about year? halfway through. I was halfway just through, about okay. ready to transfer to UF. All right. um, I was a solid C student my whole life. Um, so it was never my thing. But uh, you know, made six, seven, eight grand, whatever it was. Wasn't going to class. I'll never forget it. Get a call from my dad, and he's basically like, 
we've got to talk. I was like, he knows. Like, <laughs> they know I'm not going to school. I drive down to Orlando, meet him in this little lobby bar. I walk in. They're sitting at a table. Um, and as soon as I look at my mom, she's tearing up. I was like, what is going on? You yeah. know, I sit down and I had prepared my whole pitch. Yeah. I started this magazine. I made six grand. Um, so I sit down and, you know, my dad like stops me and he's basically like, look, you know, we love you. Um, or we'll always be here for you. But look, you know, you've been aloof. You're not answering <laughs> my calls. I saw you've got like seven grand in your bank account. You know, you selling drugs? <laughs> I was like, no, no. I started a business. I started this magazine. It's going to be a thing. I'm telling you. So now they're thrilled because yeah. I'm not a drug dealer. Um, and uh, that's how the magazine started. And I said, look, I'm going to take a semester off. I'm going to pursue this. I'm going to try to, I think I've got something. I'm going to go after it. And they said, look, you know, I'm so proud of you. I, you know, uh, so, you know, supportive. If you need anything, let me know. I've got you, but you're cut off. You know, if you want to do this, it is a hundred percent new. You got to pay for everything going forward. And that was the last day they ever gave me a penny. Um, and, uh, I turned, uh, that next issue, I probably made 15 grand, you know, working a couple hours a you day. You were releasing these how often? Quarterly. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, the second one went out grew from 24 pages to 64 pages. Um, you just not you're just knocking on doors? Just talking to businesses, you know, gyms, restaurants, jewelry stores, you name it. Anyone who wanted to reach an affluent market out in Hale at the time, that was a great way to do it. So, um, that's really what started my first business. Um, the magazine really took off. I've never gone back to school. Do you remember um, what the distribution was? Like how many you did? It was it was it was legitimate. It was fifteen thousand copies, something like that. Okay. Um, and especially uh, for like a little area like that. Yeah, that's everyone lot, we yeah. mailed it to everyone who lived there. It was you know it was great. It did really really well for over a decade. Um, we did one in Orlando. We did one in Jacksonville. Um, master plan communities like Hale were saying, hey, we have our own, you know golf course, we have our own restaurants, why not have your own magazine? Um, so that was the business and I thought, all right, we're gonna have you know, a hundred of these all over the country. Well then the real estate market crashed, print died um, and thankfully along the way, you know, we had people who were advertising in the magazine saying, hey, you know, I love your creativity, I love your ideas, I love what you designed for me, can we just hire you to handle all of our marketing? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, shoot, yeah. I mean, sure, yes, we'll figure it out. That's what an agency does. So I started an agency, and that's how Franco Media Group started. And that was what year, 2000? Only about a year or two after, after the magazine started. And then ever since, you know, 07, the agency's really become the primary business. We've sold the magazines off, and the other areas, we kept the one in Gainesville probably up until maybe five years ago. And then we were looking at it just saying, you know, we're, we're spending the amount of time we spent on this magazine compared to working with our agency clients doesn't make sense. So we, we moonlit that one. Um, <laughs> but that's how it got started. That's great. Um, so what is uh, what is Catch Tory think now? <laughs> I know, mean, it was like this idea that you were doing for, for him, right? And yeah. And it spawns off of that. And He's fantastic. It's, like <laughs> it's actually funny. He recently started, he reopened his pizza restaurant out in Hale, and uh, his first night, I, I went in and got a pizza, and you know, I was hoping he'd throw me back in the back with an apron on again, and you know, I could go go make him. But he's been great. I mean, he was a great ment. He is a great mentor to me. He's been a great friend, and because he was willing to let me, you know, hustle out of his pizza restaurant, I literally have everything. You know? awesome. Um, so it's you know, I could look back over the last, gosh, almost twenty years now. And there's been people like that at every step of the way, you know, starting with Dean. And, you know, every couple of years, someone else kind of came into the picture that I could look back and say, all right, that person or that client or that employee or that, you know, helped kind of get me to the next level. Yeah. Looking back, do you, you know, see those entrepreneurial tendencies like in your childhood anywhere? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, I mean, it goes all the way back, right? You know, my, my, both my grandparents, you know, my, my dad's parents were uh, Jewish gangsters in New York, um, and my mom, pa my mom's parents were both Holocaust survivors. And uh, you know, my grandfather lived in Auschwitz, and um, one of the worst of the worst concentration camps, you know, during the war. And my grandmother lived in the woods for a year, hiding from the Nazis. And um, I believe that both of them survived and prospered because they were able to figure it out, you know talk to people, connect with people, learn, 
make money, survive, adapt. So I can look back and I see it, you know, that far, and then I see it in my parents. You know, my my, my dad was is a consummate entrepreneur. You know, um, I've watched him be really successful, and I've watched him go through really really hard times, and I've learned everything from that. You know, um, can't learn that in a book. You just you've kind of got to yeah absorb it. Well, let's fast forward a little bit. <laughs> How big are you now? <laughs> uh, in my head, I th- I feel like we're a startup. Okay. Um, you know, by any general metrics, Frankel Media Group's grown, grown to be one of the larger shops in our area. We've got a full-time staff of around 30. Um, we have clients all over the country. Um, we do a lot in higher education, real estate, um, heavy-duty trucking. Um, on real estate, we probably represent well over a billion dollars worth of real estate projects. Um, and again, you know, my first client was a pizza restaurant and a hair salon. Um, and, uh, and now it's like a nationwide, I mean, you have clients all over the country. We do, um, we do. So when did, when did it really start to make that transition, right? From being like this, you know, business where you're printing these magazines and like really, you know, helping a lot of Gainesville, right? Mm-hmm. To growing beyond that. And do you remember when that, like what that first opportunity was or who that first client was that kind of like was the branch out? <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple of them. I mean, our first real client for the agency was a developer who came into Hale Plantation and said, hey, you've been doing the magazine here for a while. Real estate market was booming. We're going to convert all these apartments to condos, and we want to hire you to do that campaign. And it was a probably a half a million dollar campaign that they took a chance on some kid, you know, working at, you know, out of an office behind the mail room, behind the pizza restaurant, and they let me run with it. And we were wildly successful. And that was our first real client. Um, the did big- you, Did you crap your pants? Like when you got that deal? No, and, and, like- <laughs> <laughs> no um, it, it just always felt natural. You know, okay. I mean, just like you guys, I mean, your kids watch you, they see what you yeah. do, they're around it. That's just kind of what you do. I grew up around that. Okay. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there's been plenty of times I've crapped my pants or I've realized <laughs> I'm in way over my head. But, you know, I think part of what has been helpful to me and I think what's made us so successful for our clients is just an idea that there's nothing in your way until you put it in your way. And you can, you can, always look for a solution for them. And I think that's what I love about my business is, you know, people think about marketing and its websites and, you know, social media. And for me, my background was I watched my family survive or thrive, depending on where we were at in life, on just figuring out how to make it happen. Um, and it and it's not really about, is it a website, is it an ad? It's about what do you have to do to move the business forward? And whatever that calls for, whatever the prescription is, then that's what you do. So I, I think for me, it always just felt really natural that this is what we're trying to accomplish and literally stop at nothing. Work 22 hours a day. Don't ever take no until you figure out how to make that happen for that client. You know, and we still do that today. You know, uh, we make our clients a tremendous amount of money um, and no day is the same. You know, whether it's an event, an ad, writing a speech for C- a CEO, something really cool and digital, it's, you know, what do we have to do to move the needle for this business and let's go do that. I really liked how you said, uh, you know, when things happen, like you are going to figure it out. And I think that a lot of young entrepreneurs really need to hear that <clears throat> because, you know, from the outside looking in, everyone would say, oh, well, Frankel, you know, they have this and that, but I mean, you can remember like it was yesterday, as do I. Like, there's certain things happening, you're like, Man, I don't know if I can really do this, but I am going to figure this out, yeah. right? And I think that with you really saying that, you know, young entrepreneurs, you really have to understand that, hey, there'll be things that you don't know, but if you really want to figure it out, like Ryan said, if you're willing to figure it out for 22 hours a day, like it's pretty much fail proof because if you have 22 hours in a day to work on it, you're going to figure it out in two, three, four weeks, and the client's gonna be happy, and no one knows that when you started that project, you had no idea what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, can you tell us one about a time where you got in over your head? You remember one of those stories where you, like, committed and really didn't have it figured out, but had to figure it out, or? <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like that happens a lot the, in business. Yeah, this, like, this, like is, said, this is, know, like, like, typically the, the type of question that you'd think I'd try to dodge or say, no, it's perfect. <laughs> there isn't a time that, it, comes to mind, but there's rarely do we have 
a map on this is how you do it. I mean, we literally are figuring it out every day for our clients and you have to. And, and I think part of what may, has made Frankel successful is the old model of agencies up on Madison Avenue with 300 people and all the bureaucracy and red tape is dying. And most clients, we have billion dollar clients today who don't need or want that. They want someone who can get to know their business really well, who can move quickly and who can do it at a really good value. And, and COVID has really proved our model out. Um, you know, being able to come in and figure out a situation and you could have the best plan COVID hits and you got to reimagine all of it, you know? So for us, you know, have I ever been in over my head? I might be in over my head every day. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the business. The business is what do we have to do to, to make this business and the employees that they support and the customers that they support successful and what worked yesterday isn't going to work tomorrow because digital is going to change or COVID's going to hit and people don't come to the office anymore. Now, what are you going to do? You know, we're constantly reimagining how you move it forward. And, you know, there's a lot of people who specialize in a thing, a website, video, this, our business. I think what we're our real wheelhouse is how do we get them to be successful and then bring to bear the best talent, the best partners, whatever it's going to take to make that happen. Um, and that's just been in our DNA because of the way we started, you know? In order to provide such a spectacular service, do you find yourself having to limit the amount of clients that you bring on? Are you like very, like what, how intentional are you about the people, the companies that you're working with? That's an area I'm really weak in. Really? It's, it, my hardest thing is to say no to anyone on almost anything, you know, because I, I just want, I, I know that we are capable of making it happen. So it's hard to say, you know, I know we could really make this happen for you. I know you've got this PR issue and we're just not gonna take it on right now. Um, you know, uh, so our biggest challenge is um, finding the talent that we require to be able to be that expert for our clients, because you can't be you can't be SEAL Team Six of ad agencies if you don't have guys and girls who can walk into any situation and handle it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're trying to be is sort of the SEAL Team Six of ad agencies. That part's hard for I me. Like that <laughs> SEAL Team Six of ad agencies. Yeah. You know, we we want to come in with a squad of thirty or forty people and do what an agency with three hundred used to do. Yeah, and we can do it faster, better, um, more effectively. And, and have some fun while we're doing it because we're a group of really well-trained, experienced, smart Swiss Army Knives who can get thrown into a situation and handle it. Right, but do you ever feel like the team is at capacity and then you get Every like day. this great opportunity to bring, <laughs> get this great opportunity to bring on another awesome client? And they're like, so, you know, like it's one of those things because it's like, you know, when, when it's raining, when it's when it's coming in, you want to take advantage of all the opportunities, right? So you're like, all right, like may, maybe you can outsource it to another agency. Maybe you can outsource it to a freelance, whatever it is, right? Maybe you can do that. But then does that like, will that work exemplify the work you expect sure. out of Frankel Media Group? You know, and like yeah. those are those are always things that I'm constantly thinking about because you know, I don't know, especially with the scooter shop. I'm like, it, there's always been these little seasonality pushes, and I'm like, man, August we could. I'm like, oh, you're breathing? Come on in. We right. could use your help. <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like, yeah. But I, mean, I don't know if that's like the right way to handle business, or do you just say, you know, like, it's just not. We're, we can't help you right now because we're at capacity. And how, and how do you measure that? It can, <laughs> for us, it kind of goes back to the philosophy we've had since the very first day, which is we're going to make it happen. You know, so if that we're means, SEAL Team Six, we can yeah, do anything. I mean, if we've got to go hire more people, if we've got to tell our client, "Hey, it's going to take a little bit longer," um, you know, we we like to try to step up and make it happen. And you know, kind of like what Sherman was saying. I mean, I think a lot of people go into business thinking, you know, of all the things that are going to get in your way or slow you down or stop you. What if I get too busy? That's a great freaking problem to have. Figure that out when you're there. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, yeah. and you know, that's kind of how we've always approached it. Um, and maybe we've gotten lucky, but we've always been able to stay ahead. You know, even today we're, you know, we're hiring nine more people, you know, right now, I think. Um, so we're trying to get out even more ahead of it. 
is it a like where's your mindset as the leader is it like grow 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 or is it you know like is it you know streamline is it make it a, an efficient machine because i know that you know before the podcast we talked about now now you have little ones at home and yeah. so you know, you're like, I know as a parent, like you start, I was so like, grow, 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 like let's go. And now I'm kind of like, ah, maybe I can only take, you know, scale back new scooters for less a little bit in terms of model, in terms of people, yep. let it be this little profitable, functional machine that can operate without me. So I'm just kind of curious, like where your mindset is as leader. Are you like grow, grow, grow? Or it's is it evolved over the yeah. years, Colin. I mean, um, definitely <laughs> when I had kids, it, it changed. Everything. You know, be, yeah, before, <laughs> yeah, before the kids, it was the business was the baby. You know, I, it, I, I ate, slip, slept and breathed for it. I would work 20 hours a day. I'd be around it all the time. That's what I worried about every waking moment. And then I had the kids and I realized, oh, this is why I work. (laughs) I work because of them, not I work because of work. Um, So it's changed. Um, Has that changed the values within the organization at all? Like where you're more family focused versus? Yeah, to some extent. I do believe, you know, there's a lot of talk about work-life balance. I believe that's a little bit of a myth. Um, I think it's hard to find a perfect work-life balance. I think you just need to find where you want to be on that spectrum. If you want to be at home all the time well you can't be at work all the time you know if you want to crush it at work and and excel and outwork everyone else well then you're going to sacrifice some time at home um so uh, yes it's definitely changed my thought at work about family and you know we've we've become very flexible um even more flexible than ever through covid and you know i love knowing that i can be home and you know put my kids to bed or if they've got something going on at school go for it you know that's that's sort of our policy but the growth thing definitely changed and now for me it's about growing but it's about growing for a different reason it's not just about making an extra dollar it's about we want to do really cool stuff we want to really you know expand and help even more clients and then i think the biggest thing for me is getting to build my own leadership team within frankel and watching them grow and step up and lead and make money, um, you know, that's that's probably my my most exciting thing right now. So we're growing for that reason, not just growing to get bigger, or, you know, just make more money. Um, so growth is is definitely there, but it, the the reason for it and what's exciting out of it has sort of changed for me a little bit. I like how you sort of talked about. Uh, the work-life balance. I'm with you, Ryan. I don't. There's no, like, there's no balance. perfect work-life balance, right? You sort of figure out where you want to be on that chart, and then you stay there. Are you, you know, it's an make, integration, right? Yeah, it's like, definitely. Um, it's definitely cyclical. You know, um, so at at times you may be in the business, you know, a little bit more than you want, but then at other times you can be in the business even less. You know. Well, you if got three you, kids too. Yeah, I have three right? kids. Right, so yeah. like, I, like we all, we all have children. We can all kind of empathize with that with that mentality. I mean, did you see that shift when you had children? Like, were you more of like, ah, oh, like, not? You know, I, I think as an early founder, you're like you're like grinding all the time, right? Like twenty two hour days, or like eighteen yeah. hour day, whatever it is. Like, you don't even like think about it because it's just like it's it's fun. <laughs> right, and yeah. then you and then you get married and you have children and like that yeah, I it mean, just starts to shift, right? Well, yes, yeah, so, because I, I think in the beginning, you know, it's sort of, hey, you have to figure this thing out, right? Like, it's all on you. There's, like, right, right? so, you know, it's parents sort of say, okay, like, you're gonna figure this thing out. Um, same thing with my wife and I, right? Like, we didn't have anyone, so we have to figure it out. So, in the beginning, when I just had the gym, it was just like, hey, I'm going to train everyone that I can and do all of this stuff, and honey, I have a lunch break, so you and the kids come <laughs> on so we can eat lunch <laughs> yep. together, yeah. right? Um, and then now, like I can't, I'm, like, I can't imagine working oh twelve God. hours a day, like just being on my feet all day, coaching classes and all of that. But that's how you start off, you know. And I think I hear young entrepreneurs now talking about, hey, I just want to, like, I want to do this, and I want to be in Tahiti on an island and just making all this money. And I'm just like, like that's not really how it works, right? Mm-hmm. Someone may get lucky and do that for sure, but it's probably not going to be you, right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure, definitely. Yeah. Well, and, and I know that you you were talking about like the the talent aspect, right? Like getting getting that talent is is vital for mm-hmm. you. Um, I mean, with 
maybe it's changed because COVID. Like, are you really trying to grab as much of that talent as you can from Gainesville? Or are you sourcing it from outside of Gainesville? Because this has been a hot topic within yeah. the community for a while. It's yeah. been like, man, like it's a great place to have raw talent, to get that raw talent out of UF, but not really a great place to gain the experienced talent. So like, yeah. Yeah, it's a challenge for us. It's a challenge for our clients and the thousands and thousands of employees that they employ. I mean, I think everyone deals with it everywhere, right? Um, my first choice is I want to be with my team. You know, it's really hard to coach a football team over Zoom. You know, <laughs> I, I don't believe that, that you get the same result having everyone all over the place. So number one for me is if we can have our people together in our locker room, that's my first choice. We have hired a tremendous amount out of market, you know, as, as we've had COVID, you know, if there's a rock star player and they live in Kansas city, great, you know? So I think that'll, we'll see sort of where all this nets out over the next six, 12 months as we hopefully continue to recover from COVID. Um, but I like having the team all in one place. It's yeah. hard to, to schedule a, a, a time to come up with a great idea. Um, but- uh, How many team members did you say? For about 30. 30. It's good, man. Uh, I know that uh, before the show we, we kind of were chit chatting and we got we kind of talked about uh, really the creative the creative mind right and so I, and I asked you I was like do you get bored easily <laughs> and I was like wait wait don't answer that like answer that on the show because I really want to ask this on the show yeah uh, the hardest thing about this whole podcast is me sitting still in this chair <laughs> and not messing with stuff or moving around. I, I completely understand. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get bored easily. It, it's kind of twofold. I get bored easily, but if I'm into something, I could find myself focusing on it for 15 hours and not realize it's been 15 hours. Um, you know, I love what I do because I get to create and I get to uh, try new things and, and solve issues and no day is the same and I get to do it for all our clients' businesses. So I, it, it actually feeds that entrepreneur spirit of, you know, I get to come in and work with you on your business and work with you on your business, work with, with you on your business and help you grow that. Um, and I, I think if I wasn't doing what I do, I'd be wanting to start a million different businesses. You know, that's the fun is putting it together, figuring it out, growing it and seeing it blossom and then doing that again and doing that again. So part of what's happened at least over the last few years for me is, is doing other businesses, you know, in addition to Frankel, um, you know, getting to, to, to create not just with Frankel and not just for our clients, but you know, other things, um, such as what? Um, some real estate, um, you know, I've gotten really into with a, a mentor of mine, you know, doing like some, residential? some residential real estate. Okay. You know, we've watched a lot of our developer clients um, and learned from them over the years. You know, we, we partner with them on doing some things. Um, uh, extremely intrigued with cryptocurrency. You know, I just yeah. think it's absolutely fascinating. Um, in June of this year, we'll uh, I'll open a restaurant with Coach Steve Spurrier, uh, Freddie Weeby, who's just a brilliant, brilliant guy, uh, yeah, former brilliant. founder of, uh, of Domino's here in Gainesville, one of the most successful ever in that company. Um, so really excited about that. You know, getting to create that restaurant, honor Coach. Um, design what it looks like, design what, you know, it's going to feel like to work there, do the marketing for it, you know, so it's just... Uh, How did those kind of opportunities come your way? Um, I don't know. Um, just just, like, just kind of connecting and... with people. I mean, the, the Spurrier story is a, is a cool one. Um, uh, Celebration Point's been a client of ours. Um, Svein Durkle Botten, um, really, you know, uh, absolute genius developer, came up with that idea and has been working on creating literally a new place in Gainesville called Celebration Point for over a decade. Um, and uh, he's given us the opportunity to help him grow that and do marketing for him. And, you know, he, he kind of came to us and said, hey, look, you know, what if in addition to attracting tenants, what if we created a restaurant or two that would be really special for Celebration Point? And, you know, known Freddie a long time and we got to talking and, and interestingly enough, it had been an idea um, that Freddie had had for coach. They're really close. Freddie does a lot with yeah, him. That's cool. Um, so sort of the pieces came together and we had, you know, Svein with the real estate and development background, Freddie with the restaurant background, myself with the marketing background, probably the, the, the most unbelievable legacies in, in football, um, 
uh, in Coach Spurrier, and we pulled together a really gr- great group of people, and it's been uh, an amazing experience to create that restaurant, you know. Um, and it's been fun being my own client, you know. So Frankel's the agency for <laughs> right, Spurriers, right, right. Um, and that's been a blast. You know, we've had a lot of fun doing everything from designing the menus to, um, you know, kind of refining the concept. And we're really excited to welcome people to it. It's going to be something special, and it's a beast. It's Freddie knows the stats better than me, but it's, it's I think one of the top ten largest restaurants in the state of Florida. Um, you know, we're just about to start interviewing probably three or 4,000 people in hopes of hiring about 350 to come and work on the best team um, in uh, in the restaurant business in town. Um, so we're really excited about like, it. I've seen pictures, like uh, the the interior design work, does that have any influence from you guys or is that like completely separate? Like It was is... a team effort. Um, okay. We were heavily though involved in sort of bringing the brand together, working with a great a- architect out of Orlando. We'll do all the interior branding. Coach is gonna display his incredible merchandise. You know, the Heisman Trophy will sit right in the middle of the restaurant. Oh. 14 of his champions rings will sit right there That's you know so cool. coach coaches wanted to share you know all the these great accomplishments with his fans you know not just the Gator Nation but South Carolina and Duke and you know all the incredible places that he's been he wants to share all that with the people who've helped him get there so um, you know, it's, it's definitely been a, a team effort it's awesome man. at the end of the day though it's gonna be the food and the service that that really it comes down to and uh, Freddie Andrew and the team have been doing a great job of, of you know bringing in the best of the best chef, the best of the best bar folks, the best of the best, you know, on that side of the house. So we're, we're, we're pretty pumped about it. We'll have to have you come. We're, we put a podcast room right in the middle of the restaurant. So coach and some of the other Gator coaches will do their shows from there. And I'm, I'm saying it now that Colin will be there doing a show. <laughs> hey, that'd be um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. We've got to have you in there. Dude, that'd be epic, man. I think that's yeah. so cool. You know, it's, I, don't, I think it's kind of interesting because I've seen a lot more of this type of uh, concept. One of my one of my friends. I hope I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but Jamil over at Shop Mealy Pops, like he's talking about building like a little podcast studio, doing mm-hmm. there. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they're going to do something around you know trading cards and that kind of thing. Yep. And you know, I think I think you're going to see more and more of that. You see a lot of these companies. I mean, New Scooters Plus is a, a good example of a company. You, know, you form these little media, almost like these little media entities with inside inside the organization, right? And we were doing so much content. That's how I ended up getting into content creation was because we were making videos for New Scooters for Less and we're making vlogs and showing people how to fix stuff on their yeah. scooter. <laughs> and it just kind of organically yeah. grew from there. Yeah. So that's that's cool. Do you, do you feel like you have to have, uh, well, let me step back into your business for a minute. Like, are you like the idea generator? Like, is that is that your, I don't want to say primary role, but is that like a significant piece of your role? Or like, are you an executor integrator type person where you can take the reins and actually do the physical, you know, creation of it? I can do a or? lot of it good enough, okay. right? You know, it kind of goes back to, I was a solid C, B minus student my whole life, but I'd outwork anyone. Okay. So in the early days when I was the designer, copywriter, <laughs> strategist, media yeah. buyer, you know, I, I taught myself enough to be able to do enough of it well. Now we've got people far smarter than me who specialize in each of those areas. And, and, and I do think sort of my role has always been best served and is currently sort of on the business strategy, um, idea generation side. Um, but I'm, I'm a little bit of a hybrid where I've got the creative side, but I also have sort of the sales and um, uh, marketing side. I am definitely not the um, planner the the build the spreadsheet. Oh, you're not into details. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not that's not <laughs> yeah. my skill set. I, and I'd be lost without some of the people who I work with who help make that part happen. Gotcha. That's kind of where I was. That's kind of where I was going. Like I've we've we've talked about it a few times on the show, and one of the biggest realizations that I've had probably over the last couple of years is that like man, like I'm really like I'm I'm a, you know I'm a good manager, but I'm not a great manager. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like holding people accountable. I want to know what your dreams are and how I can help you get there. Yep. I like to sit at you know I love to come in, sit at the table, 
hear the discussion going on and being like, well, have you thought about doing X, Y, and Z? <laughs> and like throwing that idea out and then leaving the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I've know what I mean? That like with that my whole career. Am I, yeah. am I too tough? Am I not tight, tough enough? I want to be your friend, but I'm not supposed to be. Um, and I've kind of just given up on it. You know, this is just how I am, you know? Yeah. I mean, so are you a friend boss? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Are you I, a friend I, boss? I am a friend boss. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the... You know, me. Um. Now, I don't know if they think I'm their friend, <laughs> but I think I'm their friend. Um, you know, I, I like. How do you gauge whether or not you're their, you're a friend of theirs? Well, I, I really don't want to be their friend. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I just really want to be there for them, right? Like, I want them to know, even if, you know, Sherman gets upset or something doesn't happen, they know at the end of the day, Sherman wants what's best for me, right? And I think if they really know that, um, you know, we've had a lot of success with that over the years that people really understand that we're going to do what's best for them, right? Um, and at times it may not look like what's best for them in their eyes. Right. Um, so, but yeah. we, you know, I'm a, I'm a likable guy. So I just try to be <laughs> nice to people, you know, at, at all times, even if it's an uncomfortable conversation. So I always want to be nice to people and take care of them. Yeah, that's a hard, that's it's hard though. Tough. It's hard because like I've, you know, cause I would say that I'm very much in a similar place and like I would hold people accountable and I've even, you know, fired plenty of people. And then like later on in life, they come back to me and they say, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've gotten those LinkedIn messages that were like, hey, you know, like I know I left on bad terms and I just wanted to come back and apologize because I realized that you were right. And you know, you had such a significant impact on how I've gotten to where I am, I am at today. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I used to take some of that really, really personally, and oh, I still, I still do. But I think, I think at the end of the day, people have got to do what's best for them, and they only know what that is. And you know, I, I think that's just become a more comfortable thing to deal with. You know, where it's not about the business, it's not about you. It's just about look. You know, this we've had employees say, look, I, I don't want to work this hard right now. You know, I want to go, you know, do something else. I'm going to go back live with my parents. I'm going to go change my career. I'm going to, you know, and that's what's best for them, you know. How much of your day is spent uh, managing, uh, you know, people and having conversations like that versus doing the creative work? It's shifted for two reasons. One is my leadership team is more ingrained in the day-to-day, -day and they have everyone reporting to them. It's definitely taken me more out of it. And I'm very thankful for that. Not my favorite thing, you know, dealing with, with that aspect of the business. I'd rather be able to talk to you about, you know, how your kids are doing than if you're doing their best job at work or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then with COVID, it's changed it. You know, it, it used to be that, you know, my door was always open. People would pop in and out. We'd talk about stuff. Now, you've got to manufacture that. You've got to, like, schedule a Zoom meeting, and you've got to set a Zoom meeting, and it says to talk to you about something I'm not happy with. And it's just not quite as natural as it as it was pre-covid so um it, it's definitely less than it was you know as we get back into the office uh, i hope that there's more of that sort of organic conversation that i like to have happen um but i'm definitely more removed from it than i was and that's a welcomed thing <laughs> of course uh did covid have a significant impact on you guys primarily in and I would say because of the impact it might have had on your clients. At first, I thought we were done. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I remember sitting. <laughs> I remember sitting on the bathroom floor in my in my house with my wife, saying, "This is how this chapter in my life is going to end." Yeah. You wow. Because I've been, I, I'm more fearful of failing than anything. So I've always been fearful of and prepared my whole life because I've watched it happen so fast either in with my family or to our clients where it can literally be gone tomorrow um, and people when things are going well and you're making money you think this is never going to end right <laughs> so that fear um, comes from just other relationships where you see yeah, that happen it, it, it comes from you know uh, I, I think it comes all the way back to you know when my grandparents you know lost everything in the war right mm -hmm. you know it happened then and i've watched it happen to to my parents where you know business was going great economy changed world gone. changed gone um, so I've always been preparing for that. And I remember vividly sitting with Ashley, my wife, saying, this is it. This is how that, this is the end of this chapter. Um, so I was terrified because clients started calling and saying, you know, cut it. We're done. Stop, you know, stop running ads. No one can come to shop here. No one can come, you know, just pause everything. Um, 
And thankfully that lasted about three weeks. And then our business model got really proven, which was then we started getting calls saying, okay, we're not gonna run ads because people can't come shop here, but we gotta rethink our business. We gotta rethink our business model. We gotta talk to our employees. We gotta figure out, you know, how do we evolve and change? Can you guys help us strategize on that? And we've been busier than we've ever been over the last you know, 11 months, helping our clients grow and adapt and shift and unwind campaigns, scale campaigns back up, change their products, um, communicate to their employees. I can't tell you how many uh, a letter from the CEO we wrote to their <laughs> employees about what the company's doing and how they're feeling and what this means. And um, so it really proved out our business model. Wow. And I'm tremendously, tremendously thankful that we were able to weather this last year. Um, because of that and because of the relationships we've got with our clients where, you know, a lot of agencies have become commoditized. You know, I pay you a thousand bucks to run my ads for me. Well, guess what? You know, if I want to go to someone else, there's a million other people out there, but someone who knows your business really well, who you can trust, who knows it so well that they can think for you and figure out how do we communicate? How do we market the business? How do we pivot? that became really valuable to our clients and it really proved out our business model. So very thankful that we weathered it, not without bumps, bruises, scars, you know, to prove it, you know, it was hard on our people. Um, it was hard on, you know, our leadership team, but from a business standpoint, we were able to weather it pretty well and really excited about, all right, you know, now what, you know, we, if we can stay, doing well through that environment, you know, how do we continue to grow? So now for us, it's about, you know, getting out there and talking to more people. You know, we've been the, the shoemaker without a pair of shoes, you know, <laughs> we've been so head down, you know, working on our clients. We haven't really been out talking to more people about us. Um, so that's part of the, the next phase for us is talking taking about our own medicine. Yeah. It's, it's so hard, right? Like, I feel like, I mean, when we were doing our content creation stuff with, with repaint, and like, I mean, we never spent any time marketing ourselves or <laughs> like, no, yeah. media coming like with Lasso Framework, how much time do you spend it? Like, yeah, not a ton. Yeah, not it's a hard. Ton. Not a ton. Yeah. Did we even tell people, cause you, did we tell the audience at the beginning that you no. do Lasso? We didn't no. say that, right? So no. you have Lasso Framework. Yep. Lasso Framework. Um, tell, tell our audience really quick what that yeah, is. Yeah, so Lasso Framework, uh, we'll, we're a sales and marketing firm and we help businesses basically grow. Right, um, so we have things that we do, but we don't work with billion dollar companies, right? Mm -hmm. um, ours is sort of that uh, smaller, yeah. you know, 10 million dollars and below. Those are sort of the people that, because yeah. again, for us, <laughs> right, like I, you know, we are connectors, I'm a connector, right? So mm -hmm. I can do a great job if I get to really deal with the guy or the girl that owns the business, right? I can, I, I can make them fall in love with me, I can fall in love with them, we can make this thing work. Um, and we do, you know, basically whatever they need when it comes to sales and marketing help. Um, but I think Ryan Skip, he, he sort of breezed over something that, again, as a hardwired entrepreneur, he, you know, he was saying, hey, him and Ashley were sitting on the floor. Yeah, and they're like I worried. actually wrote that down. <laughs> you know, like they were like worried. And it's funny um, because with with Lasso and the gym, right? I, I mean, the gym, Yeah. Uh, you know, I was remember talking, telling my wife, she's like, all right, like if this thing ends right now, we gotta figure, like we really have to figure out something, right? Like what if it never comes back? And then we just sort of pivoted and we made things work. And now I look back, you know, business, both of the businesses are stronger than ever. We're doing better than ever. And I think when you're just sort of hardwired as Ryan and I are, you know, after listening to him talk, like you're going to figure it out, right? Like you're just not gonna sit back. Like if this thing, goes down like it's gonna be a, like it's gonna be a battle yeah and I don't think many people are wired like that because I know many people that went through the exact same thing and they sort of folded when things got really tough you know sort of like Mike Tyson said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so uh, like that like that was for me that was pretty cool to hear that it was affecting like everyone had to really sit down and oh, think yeah. like whoo like what are we gonna do like if yeah. this thing doesn't get back right because it was a, I mean, it was just an unknown for so many people in so many areas. How many times have I said that I've cried on this show, <laughs> or like cried <laughs> in the bathroom floor of this dealership, like sitting on the floor in there, just like. If you're not like, crying, you're not you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So I mean, so in those moments, you know, 
because you're talking at that time, 15 years, 15 years mm-hmm. in business, right? Mm-hmm. This is year 16. I mean, sitting on the floor yeah. with your wife. Yeah. What, what was her, what did she say? Do you remember? Look, I am, I, I outkicked my, my coverage with my wife. I mean, she, one of the things I love most about her is she'd be fine whether we lived in that bathroom um, or we lived in our beautiful home. I mean, and and I think she just knew and knows that whatever it is, we're gonna, we're gonna handle it, you know? And it kind of goes back to the beginning of how all this starts. And, you know, sometimes people ask me, hey, what was the hardest thing about starting your business? Right. Not a damn thing. That was the easiest part of all of it. You know, go online, you pay a hundred bucks, boom, you got a corporation. It's everything else that comes along with it, you know? And, and I, and I feel, and I wish that, that people would challenge themselves even more to know, look, something my dad, I can hear him saying it to me is, is Ryan, you could always go get a job. (laughs) You can always always go get a job. So why not try to do something different or something for yourself? Because you know what, if you fail, your backup plan is go get a job. Um, you know, and, and I, I think that's kind of how I felt at that moment and, and what I felt for my wife about, you know, wherever this takes us, there's no doubt we're gonna figure out whatever it is. Yeah, we're gonna have to sacrifice, right? You know, maybe we don't get to, to stay in our house. Maybe we don't get to do whatever, you know, material things that we like to do. But at the end of the day, I know we're gonna be fine. You know, and, and uh, I think planning for that my whole life also gave me the confidence that, yeah, okay, you know, if this all is gone tomorrow, we're gonna be all right and we'll figure out what's next. Just, you know, just like you guys felt. And I think people everywhere felt that. You know? Yeah, I think I think everybody did feel that way. I mean, you're, you really just go to that last, you know, that worst case scenario. If you can get, if you can wrap your head around the worst case scenario, which is, all right, I'm gonna have to go get a job, I'm gonna be out of business, it's done, I mean, which that was it. Like I had post-its back here. I was like, worst case scenario, <laughs> right. the business fails, <laughs> you're out of business. Yeah. Now what? I was like, oh, well, I'm pretty employable. <laughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll be able to get a job somewhere. Yeah. I know how to market myself, so yeah. I can get on a video and be like, hi, everybody. I need a job. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'd be able to make it happen somehow. So, you know. Absolutely. Once I wrapped my head around that, I was like, all right, yeah, we can, we can figure this out. Yeah. Now, look, I don't want to downplay what a lot of people have gone through and have been going Neither through. Neither do I, absolutely. You know, and, and, and certainly easier said than done, but I think your mindset is huge, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If you wake up and say, I'm screwed, this isn't gonna work, I'm gonna fail, I don't know what I'm gonna do, well, guess what, it's gonna be really hard to get out of that, you know? So what was the, what was the first thing that you did coming out of that? Like, did you pull the, like, is it like one of those rallies, you're pulling the team together? Yeah, and like... we did. Well, um, March, Friday, March 13th, we pulled everyone together in our lobby and, and we said, hey, look, this COVID thing is, might be bad. You know, we're gonna take the next two days and work from home. Yeah. And we're gonna come back, make sure, you know, all those systems work and, uh, and we'll go from there. And uh, we haven't been back into the office officially since we've just started to bring people back. Um, and we and did. you moved during that period? Yeah, we took delivery of sort of our dream space, you know, in April. You know, we own 8,000 square feet of custom built, beautiful penthouse space in Celebration Point that we haven't needed for the last year. <laughs> were you um, worried about that? Like taking ownership oh, of office space and Absolutely. be like, oh, we're never going to use this again? <laughs> like, yep. Yeah, I still don't know if we're going to need it. Oh, um, you know, but again, beautiful space and one of the best locations in, in town. and. If we don't need it, someone else will. Um, but we're planning on keeping it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a lot of unknowns. And I knew I wasn't A, smart enough, or you know, no one could see what tomorrow was. So it was just coming together, being honest with each other, talking about you know what we're gonna do, talking about, hey, look, we're trying to get uh, you know, a loan. We're trying to do you know, these things. Thankfully, we've been very financially responsible. Um, we've been preparing for this for 15 years, um, but just talking very often and bluntly with our people. Look, we might have to cut everyone's salary by 20%. Um, Thankfully, we never had to do that, but um, you know, just talking weekly, every other week with the whole team on a Zoom call, and you know, crying in front of my team, you know, saying, "Look, you know, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I feel guilty. We're we're finishing building this beautiful space with marble countertops, and I'm talking about I might have to cut your guys' salaries. 
that's messed up. You know, it was it was it was unbelievable, but it, it definitely brought a lot of us together. It weeded out some of the people who just you know weren't the right fit for the team. Um, but yeah, I mean, taking to, you know taking that space in the middle of COVID was an interesting experience. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I said this also to my wife probably a couple of weeks ago. If I if you would have told me on March 13th, 2020 where we would be today, personally, as a business, as a country, I, I, I would have taken it. Um, I, I, at that time, if I would have known where we'd be today, I would have been okay saying, all right, I'll go through this next year. Because there's a lot of great stuff that I think came out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think people got closer together. I was talking to Sarah before the show about, you know, I, I was traveling every other week. You know, I, I've got to see my kids every single night for a year. That's invaluable, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I just think it's an interesting, you know, kind of twist of what this last year for people has been. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Well, what was the greatest thing that came out of it for you? Um, I got to spend a ton of time with my family, right? Yeah. Um, I think that was a big piece, you know, like Ryan said, I wasn't traveling as much as him, but there's just always so much stuff going on. And then we were able to just slow down yeah you know with the um you know with the gym like really like sh- shutting down and people couldn't go there yeah you know like that was a scary time for us because just like oh like this covid thing like all right like i was sort of like hey we're for people that want to come to the gym we're gymming um and then they were like no one can go to the gym and i was like nah we're probably not gonna gym, if they don't want anyone <laughs> going to the gym. Um, uh, oops but that was the time i was just like okay like what did they tell us we can't open back up. And uh, it's just like, all right, I'm one of those people, I don't, I really don't focus on like the negative stuff. I'm just like, all right, like we're gonna figure this thing out. And I was like, okay, what's good gonna come out of this? I was like, well, first of all, I'm gonna be home like all the time. Yep. So like, that's a good thing, you know, wife and kids. And I think our family time, you know, it's just, anchor, like I've been able to really, my wife, she homeschools our three kids. Yep. So I've been able to be home and just be around and, you know, it's different when dad's around, right? Yeah, it's but been a it's nice. Just, it's different. It's been a nice reset. Yeah. I mean, my my answer is the same. Like I've I've said a couple times like, now on, on the show, it's like, dude, like I got to, sp- ha- I had more family dinners and yeah. you know that time period than I did in two years. You know. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times where it's like I got to get away from these oh, kids. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But that, the kids that, are yeah. driving me crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. So I have a couple more questions, and then we got to wrap this up. But you know, you've. You've grown this business now 16 years now. Why have you stayed in Gainesville? That's a really good question. <laughs> and it's one that I used to have, an an- my answer used to be, I don't know. Um, and I think like a lot of people in Gainesville, I saw staying here as a sign of maybe I didn't do anything bigger originally. You know, and I had stopped going to school halfway through and my my friends, you know, continued on and graduated and, you know, left and went to Atlanta and wherever to work. And for a long time, you know, probably the first five, six, seven years maybe of my business, the whole plan was let's grow it and I'm moving out of here. You know, I'm going to Atlanta or I'm going, you know, somewhere else. Gainesville is also not necessarily known as the mecca for advertising in the country. Right. Um, so the plan was always, you know, how do we grow to be able to grow out of here? And then I got engaged and then I got married. Changed it. We had kids. Changed it. <laughs> and I realized how great this town is. I have, n- I had no business doing some of the things that I did for our clients as early as I did in my company, and I believe in my heart, there's no way I could have done it if I lived anywhere else other than Gainesville. We were able to be a big fish in a small pond. You know, the University of Florida allowed us to do great projects for them. We've done everything from them to, you know, represent one of their largest divisions in IFAS to build floridagators.com to, um, you know, partner with them on building that site. Um, We had no business doing some of that early on. So Gainesville has been tremendous for us. You know, some of my mentors who are here and have taught me a lot of what I know, I wouldn't have had that opportunity anywhere else. And around that same conversation on the floor with my wife during COVID, I had a thought of, all right, well, what if this all goes away and the business isn't what's keeping us in Gainesville? What, you know, 
now do we would we want to move to Atlanta? And I felt really sad. And I was like, no, this is our home now. Yeah. You know, this is where our friends are. This is where our kids are going to school, and we love it here. Um, and I truly believe Gainesville just gets better and better you know all the time it's a great home base it's a great place to travel from it's a great place to get to meet unbelievable people from all over the world and you know we've really fallen in love with it um so i I see having a home base in gainesville for a really really long time what's the one thing you remember from 2005 gainesville Oh, wow. That's a great <laughs> question. Uh-huh. That's when I moved here. I moved here in 2005. 2005. Okay. So both both of you, let's... Uh, you, if you've got something, go, because I'm still thinking. Um, 2005 games, Are you remember anything? Nothing. When did we win basketball football championship? Was it oh, six? Seven, eight? It was, it was yeah, around that. Yeah, I, I just think of Swamp a lot. Yeah. You know, and for me, I was, you know, now my friends were leaving and I was still here. And I was trying to figure out, do I hang out with the college kids or do I try to be a grown up? Um, so I think 2000, <laughs> do I try yeah. to be a grown up? Yeah. 2005, I, I remember a lot of, of Swamp Restaurant. And yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, yeah, no, I don't have anything. I, I mean, around that time, you know, I remember when they were really winning all that stuff, always running into Joe Kim, Noah, Tim mm-hmm. Tebow, just like at the mall. And, yeah. At Blockbuster, yep, <laughs> you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I don't have anything that really pops yeah. out. Yeah, my uh, my old mind just goes to the way business was during that time. You know, you see how much the entrepreneurial ecosystem has grown in Gainesville yeah. since 2005. I felt like I felt like it was very much like, uh, let me go to SunBiz and pay the hundred dollars and yeah. do it myself. <laughs> had no had no guidance. Then it. I didn't uh, have a business oh, in we got to collect solid waste so. tax. Uh, note to self. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's make sure we uh, go get that <laughs> and yeah. apply for that. You know, like yeah. it's like figuring it all out on your own and just taking the steps. And you know, we <laughs> we did it though. Yep. <laughs> but now there's all you know all these incubators, accelerators, resources. Uh, that's the best word I can say. Is there's a lot more resources now. Definitely. So. Yeah. Right, it's been fun, man. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks so much for coming on. Sure, yeah. thanks for co-hosting, man. Yeah, definitely, it's man. It's been great. I do, like, we used to do, like, a little side hustle, and one of my favorite questions that I used to ask in the side hustle, and it was always the last question, so I'll ask you this question. If our show could connect you with one person, who would it be? Like, in the world? In the world. Are you going to ask Sherman too? So no, he's already answered. No, he's this, already right? answered. Who was yours? Who was your answer? You remember? I can't remember. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't remember. Was but I remember that question thing. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Living or dead? I mean, <laughs> you're more likely to meet them if they're living. Yeah, I didn't know if this is like a magical yeah, ride like, or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Because <laughs> that's a different. I, I just like to ask this question because one day, like, yeah. that person's going to get connected to yeah. that in- individual because they're going to see this episode because this show is going to, like, It's just launch. such a big question. I'd love to take a minute to, to make sure I give the right answer so that when you meet them, you can connect me with them. Yep. Um, it, my immediate reaction for whatever ever reason was Elon Musk. Musk and I'm okay. a, and I'm not a diehard Elon Musk fan, but when you ask me, that's the first name that popped into my head. Um, I just think he's fascinating, and you know he's a creator too, right? Yeah. You know he he just likes to create and do and I feel he figure has, it out. And I feel he has that exact same problem. Like he's got way too many ideas and not enough brilliant people around him to like actually go and execute. I mean he's got he's a, got a he's lot got of brilliant all people, the but brilliant, yeah. Yeah, he's got a ton of brilliant people. <laughs> yeah. But I even like watched uh, Joe Rogan kind of asking him about like, hey, so you're gonna do you're gonna do planes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you could tell that he had like thought it all out yeah right like he knew all the engineering and like he, he had thought it out but you know he's he's like yeah i'm i'm just too busy yeah, he <laughs> I, is. I just got he i got is. too much on my plate i don't yeah. think i'm gonna do planes at least not anytime soon it's just like, oh. yeah. it's like i don't, should, I don't know do if planes. that's my like if i really got to rub the genie and pick i don't know if that's who i'd pick but that's that's who that's came a good to answer mind. though yeah. that'd be interesting that is so cool, man. Well, where can our audience, you know, connect with you or kind of keep up with what's going on with Frankel Media Group? Yeah, um, or? you know, all the typical right. channels: Instagram, Facebook, our website, FrankelMedia.com. Um, like I said, we need to do an even better job of of being connected. We're so busy doing that for our clients that we don't do the best job of it for ourselves. Um, 
my LinkedIn needs serious help. <laughs> um, you know, I need to dig in on that. But you know, all the typical channels, you can certainly stay in tune with us. Awesome, man. And I look forward to eating at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in we June. Not wait to have you. That's no. gonna be awesome, man. Yeah. You mean go together? June. Yeah, we're gonna go together. <laughs> I like good food, so yeah. <laughs> let's Food's go. Food's gonna be incredible. Um, thanks so much to the team that also makes this possible. You guys we got James Leitner who does all of the video and the editing and the audio and Sarah Lance who does all of our great social media. And of course, special thanks to Sherman Merricks for jo joining me on today's episode as co-host. Co Appreciate you, bro. And uh, if you were driving and didn't have a chance to write down the information of all the incredible sponsors that make this show possible, don't worry guys, you can check it out at whoagnv.com slash sponsors. We have links that go to all of their or all of their websites and that kind of stuff. And of course, if you're listening to this, uh, that link is in the show notes of this particular episode. So just go there and get linked in. And uh, special love this episode to our friends at Gainesville Harley Davidson. Uh, our team at New Scooter Celeste loves having two-wheeled friends that love the freedom of riding as much as we do. If you're looking to upgrade that scooter, <laughs> uh, if you're looking to upgrade that scooter to a more powerful cycle, I uh, can't recommend anybody more than Gainesville Harley Davidson, you guys. And if you already have a motorcycle and need your bike service, Gainesville Harley Davidson makes it easy with the free pickup for major services within a 50 mile radius. From bolt on parts to ground up cu customization, the experienced staff at Gainesville Harley Davidson can do it all and they'll pick up your bike. Call 352-331-6363. Again, that's 352-331-6363 to ask about free pickup to get your Harley service today. And remember, they have the bike night on the last Friday of every month. This is a great place to take the family. They got food, fun, music. Uh, it's gonna be Friday, April 30th. They do that on the last Friday of every month from five to 9 p.m. So get out there, check out the fest festivities, have a great time, and when you do, say, I heard you on the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks, Colin.